Well, here we are again for uh, another month of uh, East West, our, our monthly or bi monthly talk about uh, global issues between Dr. Enamel Hawk from East West University in Dhaka, Bangladesh. I'm Philip Shaw here in Ontario, Canada. And what I thought we'd talk about this week was some of the new artificial intelligence tools that are coming out uh, over the last little while. We've seen some applications come out where people have been able to uh, use uh, artificial intelligence in their own lives. And it, it's incredibly interesting. The one that I, I first uh, saw was something called ChatGPT. And if you haven't tried it, you can go to uh, the website. Maybe we can post it here, maybe we can't. Or you can do a Google search on it and you can you can find ChatGPT, it's artificial intelligence application where you can uh, pose particular questions and get long answers about what you ask. And so if you think about it, if you think about the first time you ever used a Google search, and for some of you younger people, it might be ubiquitous, but for some of us older people like Enamel and I, uh, that was something new. Uh, this chat GBT, in my opinion, and the artificial intelligence applications that are coming out. Uh, for instance, Microsoft is investing in chat GBT. Google has their version, and there's many other versions that are coming out. To me, this is kind of a seminal event uh, where if you think back to when you first did your Google search, and I remember when I first actually told Dr. Hawk about Google, I actually spelled it out and stood behind him as he did his first Google search and how amazed he was at the results. And this was 22 years ago when we did this. Uh, this new age where we have artificial intelligence applications that you can use on your own phone or your tablet or your computer seems to be the same type of thing. And uh, uh, it's kind of one of those trans transformational events that we, we might have as human beings where we can use something to uh, improve our lives. Uh, the only problem is it's not perfect right now. And for instance, I was able to pose questions about the things that I write about, which are grain prices and economics and agricultural economics. And some of the answers that I was getting uh, weren't necessarily wrong, but they weren't necessarily true either. And there is a lot of criticism that it might uh, be a tool in the wrong hands that won't be good. But at the same time, it might be a tool that we could put in the hands of the people uh, to help us with education and, and help us with many other aspects of, uh, of life. Now, we've talked about technology before, but this is something that is very tangible and something that you can use today if you want to try it. And it's something that is constantly uh, improving now. Uh, for instance, I wrote a question the other day and I asked specifically about how grain is moved within the province of Ontario, Canada, where I'm from. And it actually gave me a pretty good answer. It's, it certainly wasn't perfect. The answer to the question I ask, basically there isn't an answer. It's pretty vague, but I get asked that question all the time and, and uh, I can give a pretty good answer. But it gave me a good outline where I can write articles from it. So if you transferred that to any other world you are in, like, for instance, Dr. Hawks, the university professor in Dhaka, Bangladesh, and my goodness, his students might be able to put in his questions and get this artificial intelligence to generate answers to help them. So it certainly presents challenges for the, uh, for the field of study he's in and for different other industries. But the bottom line is it's new. Uh, it's probably not perfect, but it, 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 it does represent a tangible transformational change that not only will affect us humans uh, relating to each other, but surely it will affect the global economy uh, as well. So with that, I'll just throw it over to Dr. Hawk and he can talk about it in, in the experience. Thank you, Phil. I think you have pointed out correctly that this is uh, probably a new change that most people were not ready for it, just like when Google came. I still remember we were using Yahoo, uh, Net, uh, Netscape, those kind of a browser. Uh, they were good, impressive at that time, but Google came and wow, it completely changed the way we think. Uh, 
many people at that time was also worried about Google because it knows everything. And because it knows everything, people were thinking whether we will need dictionary, whether we will need uh, reference materials, things like that. Over time, Google also uh, improved significantly. Uh, Chat GPT is a, uh, is a, I still remember, let me also go back a little bit. We used to search uh, with different logic and Google came, we said, don't you have to do logic, just type in and I will find out. So that was a big improvement uh, in Google. Uh, if, uh, but, but this is exactly the same thing that is currently happening right now in this uh, uh, chat GPT because uh, chat GPT is a natural language processor. In a way, you can write in, in plain English and ask a question and chat GPT will be able to give you a pretty good answer. I tried it also. I was not very impressed with the answer, but obviously as a new uh, software, I think it, it gives you a good outline. It helps if someone has no idea about something and want to know. I think it's a pretty good organized answer. That's how I see it. But when I, I was, I still don't remember exactly, but I remember when I was using it, I was not very impressed. What I was impressed is the structure that they provide the answer. So, for example, I'm, I'm teaching. And many students uh, even uh, cannot write perfectly in terms of organizing things. So I think this is probably going to be used. It, it puts a challenge for us as a teacher because uh, what is our objective in teaching? Our objective in teaching is for students to think, students to do their own research work, and students to come up with an idea that is his or her. Uh, the biggest problem I see that now it will be an idea that coming from Chat GPT, not his or yeah, her, yeah, yeah. and he probably have no idea what he has written. So yeah. that is the challenge, probably only for us, but for many other profession, it will be yeah. a great help. So if you if you think carefully between the line, if I am a lawyer, it will come up with references that probably be good. Even if I want to write a computer software, a code, I'm looking for, I want to write my uh, HTML web page, it is uh, supposed to give you a good code in form. So probably for many other profession, it is very helpful. Uh, but uh, my own feeling is that I think the education, university teachers mm -hmm. like me uh, will find it uh, difficult. My, uh, it's not the difficulty the way I see it, the way I see it is that whether the student will be alienated from learning. And so we need to be innovative. We cannot stop it. That's obviously no, true. No, yes, no. We cannot stop it. So we need to be innovative, uh, telling them, use it. But in order <laughs> to get to my question, you have to show you have learned, which we do. So it's putting a lot of challenge. But I think it's going to be helpful for many people. Uh, well, have, any of your students, have any of your students brought it up to you already? Uh, I have, they are using it. That's uh, no, okay. it, it, They're already using it. But let's imagine that there is a blind person want to get something. And Chad GPT will be able to write him up and read it for him. So in a way, it will be very useful for that group of people. So I see a lot of good use of it and a lot of challenges for educators like me. Uh, particularly, I think uh, that will be. And the other thing that is like, if you people use it blindly without thinking what it is, uh, probably this will be a dangerous one because uh, professionals hopefully will not use, use it blindly because they will recheck just like you were looking at the answers you were not pretty happy with. I still remember the answer that I got, I was not very happy with. But I think this will improve over time as we use more and more. Uh, so yes. I think I think that is something going to happen. Uh, the biggest challenge will come on Google because whether people will change their searching for it. In other words, instead of searching in Google, they will start searching in ChatGPT, and that will significantly reduce the uh, the internet user in Google. And I think this is probably the biggest challenge I see for the tech world. Yeah, and and I think that is how I put it. Over to you. Well, well, Google will have their own version, uh, just like Microsoft is going to have their own version. And 
and certainly there, there, there will be other versions as well. Uh, and like you say, you mentioned the blind person to help them get, you know, there's also other people with disability. Uh, this type of technology will help. But my goodness, you know, you can also see this technology being used nefarious, nefariously, you know, in the wrong hands. And how are we going to deal with that? But I often hearken back to, I remember you went to China a few years ago and, and you know, you don't speak Mandarin, you don't speak Chinese. But you were in a market and you were corresponding with the, the store owners in the market uh, with Google Translate, with uh, Bangla and Chinese. And you actually are able to correspond that way. So just think about how monumental that was, you know, and just think about artificial intelligence combined with that technology and how it might change things in the future. Like, I think it's very significant what you said. These things are going to improve. And with that, hopefully, hopefully uh, their utility will be even better for uh, uh, humankind and, and we'll learn how, to, or learn how to use them a little bit more effectively uh, in the future. But it is really something, uh, the way things, the way it could provide exponential change for society. I think it will. I think it will. But as I say, as you are worried about, for example, the wrong hand, my feeling is that technology always can be used by the good and the bad. And so uh, while you and I may be worried about it, but everyone is going to use it. Someone can ask Chad GPT how to make a bomb. These yeah. are all possible questions. But Google yeah. has done the same thing. So uh, I think uh, that worry, I'm not much uh, worried in that okay. sense because I think... Okay. Technology has always good and bad use throughout the history of human civilization. But it is something for, uh, for which probably younger generation was not ready. I was listening to one uh, YouTube today and it was showing that you can use ChatGPT to learn the English grammar. So you see people living in rural areas in Bangladesh, for example, they can use it on their mobile phones to improve their English writing skill, English speaking skill. So I can see a lot of good use of it. It's probably going to change the way we search in uh, computer, the way we search in the internet. It is probably going to change profession. And I think uh, the biggest challenge probably will come back to the academic around the world because education has to think quietly. I still remember the day when we used to learn English, we started learning from grammar was our basic. Uh, pronunciation was not. But right now, a lot of time we ask our students, use Google to pronounce certain words so that your pronunciation becomes better. So okay. in, a way, in a way, technology can be used to help a lot of people. Probably this will also uh, be used uh, by most English speaking rather than other languages. So yeah. that is probably converge the world towards one language unless everyone else come up with their own chat between the different languages. And that will happen. That will likely happen. Yes. So I think I think that is where it is. And uh, in a way, I'm not worried, but I think uh, let, let us welcome the technology and see how it goes, who is going to use it, and uh, be prepared for a challenge that uh, probably one day chat GPT will prepare a east-west for us. Well, that could be, that could be, I don't know how it would ever capture our unique personalities, but if you think about it, you know, if you're out there watching this, you should at least try it. And what I would do is ask a series of questions and get more specific as you go. And you'll find out what we mean that you don't always get the answers that you're looking for. I added a degree of specificity to my question and I found it worked a little bit better than that. But a year from now, I would really like to know how it's really improved because you're right, Google really improved over time, and and this is going to do this is going to do the, the same type of thing. Okay, Phil, thank you. I think this was a discussion for all of us, particularly to understand the new technology and to see its different use. I think by the time a year from now, we will see it to be used by different groups at different level, and probably we'll learn better from that.